Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps real-time interviews. Now, we have a profile with us today and this person has a good experience in Kubernetes and CloudFormation but uh, this video is a excerpt of a larger part and uh, this is the same person who has given the Kubernetes interview. Go check it out, uh, the previous video. And we're going to talk about CloudFormation. It is not uh, a large interview. It is It would be like 10 to 15 minutes because it's an excerpt of a larger part all right so uh, that would be all so if you're new over here please do subscribe the channel because that would really support me to create more content like this and also if you're seeing this video on telegram instagram or twitter or anywhere else please do check out the link in the description or the pinned comment all right so without further ado let's get started Have you ever worked on any infrastructure as a code uh, tool? I'm a heavy cloud formation guy, to be honest. But uh, because of the current company, everyone worked on Terraform. I forced to move to Terraform. So, <laughs> okay. So, you so I mean, I'm I'm still if if uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I can I still write uh, cloud formation templates whenever I want. Uh, I uh, still use uh, CDK sometimes for my personal projects. Little bit of Pulumi. Oh, That's, nice. Uh, yeah, so I try, I mean, so in between we tried to move from Terraform to Pulumi just for, uh, just to test. But uh, the problem was uh, not everybody was good in Python. Some mm -hmm. of the guys, I mean, only two, three guys are actually good in Python. So we thought, uh, yeah, it, uh, it's actually causing more problems than we expected. Because when we are, when somebody wants to write something, they are looking into like, okay, Python documentation, then writing like some codes, which is not like properly optimized. So which is actually most important, so like, yeah, uh, we'll think of Pulumi later. Because uh, the main reason was we want to uh, currently have, we have a few MongoDB clusters. So when we bring up the MongoDB, what we normally do is we run the Terraforms. It brings up uh, uh, maybe based on the cluster says, let's say it's a bring up five nodes and we have a salt stack. We run the salt on top of that. So we thought of uh, instead of uh, uh, currently Terraform, once the Terraform is run, uh, it have a user data basically it registers with the salt. But from the salt, actually we are calling the salt applet again back. Because this assault actually it works on the uh, uh, pull mechanism. It's not a, so basically uh, because of that uh, when we try the pulling because salt also have an API. Literally, it's everything is in Python, right? So we can uh, uh, automate the end-to-end -end creation of the MongoDB clusters. So that was a primary. Uh, so we still using it for MongoDB only because other things uh, when the other start, people started writing it, it started causing issues. So we thought, okay, yeah, let's keep it for this kind of. Uh, this kind of purpose like uh, uh, Kafka, MongoDB, rest of the things we will still use uh, Terraform the normal way. Okay, okay. So uh, since uh, you are from the uh, cloud formation, uh, let's let's start from that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so like, I I assume that you have heavily worked on that and you have you might have created a lot of services, right? So um, tell me about. Yes, I mean, uh, yeah, tell, uh, yeah. Go on, go on. So tell me about three, four. Uh, best practices that you think a person should have while working with cloud formation? Okay, uh, so I would say from my personal experience, I don't know whether there is a best practice somewhere available in the blog or anything, but from my personal experience, most of the things should be parameterized. Mm -hmm. Whatever the things you can parameterize, because uh, you, should be up, you should be able to apply this particular cloud formation template across any accounts, across any, any regions. That's a primary objective. And uh, don't try to, as I said, okay, even if it's a th something which is available on the AWS, for example, you want to fetch the latest AMI from AWS, use as some parameter store and try to fetch those kind of things. And uh, if there is anything which is AWS available as a pseudo parameter, like a VPC ID subnet, mm -hmm. try to use those kind of things instead of uh, you try to copy and paste from the AWS console. Mm -hmm. And if you want to use, uh, uh, for example, you want to create a VPC and you want to create a, let's say you want to create an EKS cluster or ECS cluster, something on top of that. Either you can either use an SS stack or even if you're using like, okay, two a different stack, try to uh, export the variables from the first stack and like try to import it back on the second stack. In the output, just try to import, for example, VPC ID, everything, and maybe use the stack name or something as a reference and uh, try to pull the data from the second stack to basically get those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's pretty much the major things uh, do. And uh, in case of there is any, are you expecting any secrets? Try to use the secret store or try to pull that maybe in the user data or wherever wherever you want. Mm -hmm. 
parameterization is again one of the best practices i mean it gives you the flexibility and you can avoid the hard coding part so exactly exactly it's, yeah it's, especially it's, in case of ami and all because i seen like people yeah. are just using ami one of the ami as default and when you apply for other region right things will mm-hmm. start breaking but these kind of things are already available in the ssm so you can just use the thing and it will automatically feel like what is the latest available in for this particular type of uh, like let's say it's a amazon linux you can just get it uh, directly from the parameter store Okay, so these uh, YAML files that you are creating, um, are you deploying it manually or uh, is it happening through CI/CD? So you can do in multiple ways. So uh, see, in case of currently, I said okay, we are using Terraform. So Terraform, in our case, we are using Atlantis. Okay. So uh, let's say I want to I want to do some changes. I give the pull request to the uh, particular repository. We have a Terraform uh, repository. So I I we have we are keeping modules in a different folder, and we have, for example, I want to create a new VPC. uh i create the i create the uh, whatever the files which is required for the vpc i given the pr to the corresponding repository atlantis will do the plan and one of the team members basically will do a just a review and once you approve it basically to the uh, atlantis supply and uh, the uh, pr will get merged automatically that's a current flow which we are following but in case of cloud formation you have multiple ways of doing it uh, for example if you if you are like a very ansible kind of guy ansible have an option to basically call the cloud formation in uh, Uh, in theory, and Ansible can be called from technically anywhere. You can even you can use AWS uh, Code Build or uh, Code Pipeline, whatever the things you want. Not Code Build technically because it's actually for the building. Maybe uh, uh, Code Pipeline, and you can try to uh, automate those things. Or uh, maybe I, I never tried this thing, but uh, in the SSM part, SSM also basically support running the playbook. But I don't know what is the exact trigger to use for that because I don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are using it for a very specific purpose only. uh probably you will be able to run the playbook from the ssm itself that's an another option or if you are, if you are like a uh, jenkins guy you can just uh, uh, technically write anything in the pipeline uh jenkins or uh, drone or whatever the ci cd tools you are using it's also possible okay 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 fair enough so uh, in this cloud formation have you ever used any uh, nested stack do you know the concept of it Yeah, yeah. So that's what I said. Okay, you can use the nest. So you can refer the other stack in the in the primary stack, and you can start using it. I use nest stack. I mean, uh, so as I said, okay, it's been like three, four years since I not writing CloudFormation very heavily because of the uh, uh, the current team is very heavily into Terraform. But uh, I still use a little bit. Of, I mean, I uh, uh, so the nest stack. The primary objective is okay. Instead of uh, uh, use everything in the single stack. Uh, you m- mention the other stack s3 url or whatever the reference to the other stack in the pli- in the in the primary stack and it will start utilizing that stack to basically create everything mm, that's okay. a, that's the overall concept yeah yeah i mean correct uh, you can break down a large template into small smaller templates uh, yeah. it gives you modularity uh, similar to the concept it's, uh, it's give you so, yeah uh, especially for example you you want to create a, a vpc subnet route table eks ecs i mean eks uh, ecr let's say and a couple of iam nodes everything in the yam in single yaml probably the file become like 2000 3000 lines and it would be very hard to figure out if something is going wrong so it's better to for modularity it's better to split it into small files and maintain it in a proper way okay okay uh anything uh, any idea on uh, Uh, stack policies how do they work stack policy uh, so there are like stack chain set which is actually to kind of a diff and stack policy actually if i remember correctly stack policy is something like uh, uh, i don't know whether this uh, this thing is correct or not is it about uh, like what are the resources you created like what you can delete or what you can't delete is, is it that or i mean i don't remember exactly the the concept of stack policy yeah it's uh, either it should be that because the, It's more uh, of either a... it could be that, or uh, like okay, IAM permission level thing. Okay, what what the stack can create, uh, what role it should be used technically to create the resources. There are two things. I don't know which one is which one is that. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. Okay, so basically, uh, when you have a stack policy, uh, it's used to mm-hmm. control the updates on the whatever stack resources that you have, and you can Correct. basically mm-hmm. allow or deny. any specific update action on those individual resources that you have created yeah. mostly json based yeah, yeah. identity uh, documents yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay okay yeah okay okay uh, no problem yeah it's been like so a bit a bit time like okay i wrote it so i mean like i'm, I'm trying to trying to get it yeah okay uh, let's okay. talk about uh, one scenario uh, let's say you have an okay. uh, 
EC2 uh, instance and they are under auto scaling group. Okay. okay. I mm -hmm. want to update that. Okay. And uh, how would you roll update, out that uh, update? Uh, update? Update uh, what? Like uh, auto scaling, auto -scaling group group. parameters or AM? Okay. Uh -huh. EC2 or uh, auto scaling group. Uh, so there is okay. a specific thing for that. Uh, any idea about that? How would you roll the update? No, I didn't get the, get the question. If you can just brief me a bit. Okay, so, uh, so how can you, you have an auto scaling group? How can you roll out? You have an auto scaling group, uh, uh, and you have an uh, you have an EC2 attached. I mean, you have an AMI which is on the launch template or launch configuration, whatever it is. Currently, it support only launch template. I think it's not no longer supporting launch configuration. So it's a it's a it's there. Now, yeah. what you want to update it? So you using are using cloud to formation. I want to using cloud formation. I want to update it. So is there in, in anything uh, to update in cloud formation? Any idea about that? No, no. You so in the cloud through cloud formation, I created the auto scaling group. Through cloud formation, I created this uh, launch template. Everything. Yeah, I mean, everything I want is to created update by it. cloud formation. Yes. I mean, if you want to update it, for example, if I, if I want to update the auto scaling group account level, okay, let's say two or three to five to ten. Technically, I can go and update it. Uh, I don't know is there anything which is blocking that. Uh, maybe I didn't got the question correctly because. Uh, technically, it's a parameter. You can you can go the you can go and change any parameter. And uh, if it's a SG min max value is a parameter, or let's say the MA is a parameter, or or something in the user data is a parameter. Let's say I'm I'm updating something. I am injecting some value in the user data. I can go and update it, and uh, I can technically update the stack. Should be and uh, it should work, right? I mean, I don't know if there any any other thing which is which I'm missing. Okay, I mean. The answer that I was looking for, uh, there is a specific policy in that uh, we have auto scaling replacing update. Uh, so this will allow you to ah, okay. group one by one in in the auto scaling group uh, one by one, and this will ensure yeah, you that can, you can. Okay, you are okay. Okay, I got it. So you are trying to okay. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't th thought about. I mean, I'm not getting the exact context. That's why. I mean, I understand. So even if you are using the code pipeline, code, you can say okay, I want to update twenty five percent of the uh, instances when you are deploying it and. Uh, or even case of ASG, uh, the, 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 so you want to make sure when the new instance only when the new one is completely comes up, the old one should get removed. That's a that's a replacement policy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't got the context actually. I mean, I no just problem. got uh, missed a bit. I, yeah. No problem. So. Um... So if I have a, a non AWS resource, okay, uh, can I use cloud formation to manage that? Is it possible? Non AWS resource in the sense uh, custom uh, resource, which like, is not uh, related to AWS. Heard about it? Anything? So AWS. Ha I mean, see, AWS support custom resources, but I I never tried it. I mean, basically through Lambda, through even through a Lambda function, you can try to control the custom resources. But uh, to be honest, I I never tried it actually. I never okay. got a chance to basically do uh, anything with the custom resources. Okay. okay, no problem. But yeah, I mean. At cloud formation custom resources to manage uh, anything that is uh, yeah, yeah, non AWS. Yeah, yeah that, that's fine. If you have yeah, yeah, I mean, I I I read it, but I never got a chance to basically check uh, or do a, do anything on that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, consider a scenario in which uh, there is a drift. Okay. In the uh, in the services okay. that you have created, how do you generally identify mm -hmm. that? See. Uh, Drift detection is a it's a prime. I mean, in case of let's say in case of Terraform, it's very it's very easy because Terraform support like okay, if you do a plan, technically it should be able to figure out the drift. Even mm -hmm. uh, now, CloudFormation starts supporting the drift if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. It was uh, three years back that was not the case. I don't have any idea for like what I change manually. If I change something from console, it will try to basically uh, revert back whatever the changes. It won't show anything. But now I think there's a drift detection. So. Uh, even even in the CDK, CDK is technically using cloud formation in the background. CDK you can see CDK defend will basically show you like what you created in the resource and what actually drifted from uh, the resources which you are supposed to create. So cloud formation, uh, if I remember correctly, it supported that because CDK um, in the background using cloud formation. So uh, I don't know if you go to the cloud formation uh, template and I mean let's say I try to go and update it. Uh, whether it will show that a guy changed from X to Y, I don't know. It will show that. I didn't check from the console, but 
it should be doable because of it started supporting the lift yeah yeah it's 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 doable uh, if you go to the console and uh, there is a command i think describe hyphen stack hyphen drifts you can easily uh, yeah, get, yeah it, should, it should be because the cdk also cdk uh, uh, cdk now have a cdk uh, drift so basically eventually it's causing it's creating the cross machine template itself so uh that's why i said okay it should be doable but i don't i don't i didn't check the exact cli command so but it should be there yeah. okay all right so uh consider a scenario in which uh, you are doing some update using cloud formation okay and it failed how would you roll it back so cloud formation support two kind of uh, i mean uh one option is you can roll back everything you created even mm-hmm. in the initial stack initial stack creation technically i think it will fail but even i think now there's an option like keep whatever the resources which is not failed but uh, uh stop the updates mm-hmm. but uh, the regular scenario is let's say i i uh, i try to update a subnet which doesn't exist in the system i pass to create a i pass a subnet which is not existing in the system it technically it will try to uh, roll back whatever the changes i did confirmation itself will roll back because uh, it keeps the state uh, state or it knows like what is the state of the system so it will try to roll back to the previous state previous known state Okay. Uh, you can also set a rollback configuration to specify how many failed resources are allowed before triggering a rollback. This is one thing that you can do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Say, yeah I mean, even uh, that's what I'm saying. Okay, even when you're creating the stack, now it support uh, saying that okay. Previously, when when you start creating a stack, if uh, let's say the last object failed, it will say okay, it won't even allow you to update it. The only option is actually delete the delete the template and uh, delete the uh, cloud formation, and uh, you have to fix it and recreate it back. Now I think there's an option, something like. If if anything fail, okay, just keep the resources as it is, and I I will be able to update it then. It support uh, something like this. I I checked it something recently. I seen something like this on their blog, but uh, uh, never checked it actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let us consider uh, there are multiple resources, and uh, you want to handle the dependencies between uh, both of them. How would how do you do that? Mm-hmm. So in case of cloud formation, uh, there's a depends on kind of thing. If I remember correctly, mm-hmm. so let's say I want to create a ECS fast definition, but it requires an ECR image to be present. Mm-hmm. Let's say I'm pushing an ECR or whatever, whatever the things. There is a dependence on some. So I can say okay, this depends on uh, this thing. So only so technically you can control the order of the resources creation based on that. Okay, correct, correct. Hmm. Um... Have you ever created any conditional resources in the cloud formation template? If yes, then uh, what were they? A conditional resources I remember I created, but I'm I'm just like, trying to get it. I think it's a. Uh, I mean, I remember it is something like okay, if something goes true, then only go and create it. I mean, um, it's if I remember correctly, uh, the last time i did it something for an uh, uh, rds multi ac kind of thing so if the if the stack is dev okay multi ac should be like a uh, false so there was some condition but i don't remember the exact syntax of that but uh, it was actually in the conditional uh, cloud formation template if stack is dev okay uh, uh, rds should be like a single ac uh, t2 micro and if the stack is uh, something else go and create a like uh, multi ac kind of thing Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, I mean they are based on certain parameter and values by defining the condition. Yeah, you can you can you can as a instead of sub ref like there is something else, but I don't remember the exact exact thing which I used. Okay, okay. Um, so in the project that you were uh, using uh, cloud formation, how do you uh, ensure the security uh, for the cloud formation templates? You mean the template itself, yes. or I mean what kind of so so in case of uh, template templates, basically we keep the templates in uh, uh, one of the private repositories. That's a that's a private. I mean we won't put it on public, right? So mm-hmm. either it might be code commit or maybe a, a private uh, organizational GitHub account. So that's where we normally keep the templates, and normally we won't keep anything which is a uh, uh, which is like a secret on the uh, or which should be exposed on the cloud formation template because. that's another for example in the user data i passed the i have a cloud formation template in the user data i am just passing i'm echoing the rds username password to one file to get to read it that's technically a wrong implementation so those kind of things shouldn't be in the cloud formation template as long as the template doesn't have any any uh, critical value or personal identity uh, information um it's a, on a normal github account it should be fine you know in private even if uh, a uh, team by a uh, team member have access to it i don't think it it's going to make it a uh, big issue to be honest 
and uh, when you are playing it on it it's technically the IAM permission for example i i am i'm i'm an admin or i have complete access to cloud formation or uh, i should be able to create uh, whatever the resources which i want or let's say i have a teammate who have only specific permission okay he have only read access or he have only access to specific resources he won't be able to create it okay 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 this is um, this this is fine